If there was an engineering themed comic book, Galit Mendelssohn would be our superhero protagonist. She gives everyone around her the ability to control the flow of data and power over a single cable or even move data through thin air. We don't have that comic book, but we do have Galit and her superpowers. And she's here to talk about how you can simplify the process of moving data from homes and buildings into the cloud. Welcome to Tech Chats, Galit. Hi, thank you for the invitation to uh, share. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, this is the final episode in our three-part series on smart homes and buildings. And before we get to your superpowers, let's talk about all of these things that make up the Internet of Things. When we speak about uh, IoT, Internet of Things, we definitely see a huge change in the world and we see more and more uh, applications, uh, services that are being added to this uh, big uh, buzzword called uh, IoT. We do see on one, uh, on one hand uh, lighting that starts to adopt what we call the IP protocol, so IP-based luminaires, LEDs. Uh, we see uh, smart energy metering, uh, HVAC controllers, security uh, cameras, uh, security sensors, access controls, and so on and so on. Those services are being added uh, lately to what we call the digital buildings. That's on one hand. And on the other hand, we also see a change in the services and the management uh, capabilities of those different applications. So the ability to remotely manage them and control those services actually add another element to the equation, which is the connectivity to the cloud and the ability to ma manage those applications, whether it's locally or remotely over the cloud. And uh, what I'm going to present uh, and discuss here is uh, the different architectures that are required in order to support this convergence of uh, services and application in homes and buildings in order to build what we call a smart, connected, and secure implementation of the IoT. So what do those architectures look like? This is, a, let's say, a typical uh, system architecture. So... What you see in this specific example is basically the backbone, the switches, and then different applications that connect to it, whether it's wired or wireless, okay? You can see here uh, light bulbs, so uh, LED, of course, IP-based ones, uh, surveillance cameras, uh, and uh, also other elements that I'm going to uh, present in a minute. Uh, this specific uh, red, let's say, circle that you see here presents another important element that connects to the network, which is the BMS, what we call the building management server. And this server allows uh, to control the network and offers a more flexible, let's say, an intelligent management and control of the smart building. It aggregates all the data that comes from all the nodes and uh, allows control and manipulation over it, right? Uh, and on the right side, you see the connectivity of a typical BMS to the cloud. It's becoming more and more uh, useful to connect between different uh, networks over the cloud. And this requires a little bit more of attention because of the security elements that is required. And of course, the, the entire connectivity aspect when uh, connecting into uh, cloud service providers. So here you can see that there are different uh, devices that can connect to the network. You have lighting, you have the surveillance cameras. You can also have appliances that did not connect to the network before, but now they do. Uh, washing machines, different access controls. So we start to see uh, different implementations uh, of appliances that before were not connected to the network, were not part of what we used to call the data infrastructure. And now they start to be part of it. And the minute they become part of it, we basically enter a, a very interesting world because users and IT managers get control over all those appliances uh, over their uh, smartphones, iPads, iPhone, uh, Android, whatever. Of course, it's usually done over the cloud, and it is requiring to look into different uh, aspects of the design of such a network. With all of these devices and users, how is everything communicating? So uh, let's take an example. Someone is uh, actually controlling the network from one of those uh, smartphones. So this specific command basically turns the light on. How does it work? Okay. So the command goes through the cloud into the network, into the BMS, the building management server, then to the switch. In this specific case, we're talking about a POE switch that uh, Microchip also has. 
and to the luminar that is an IP based luminar which basically uh, allows it to turn it on so this is one example of a, a very simple way to turn on the light uh, in a certain building a remote building uh, can be also in another country there is no limitation of distance anymore there is another example here specifically uh, showing an example within a certain let's say building digital building and uh, here we're talking about an example that is based upon a trigger that comes from a wireless sensor uh, that triggers a certain change in, uh, in temperature, for example. So this sensor triggers certain command that uh, is being uh, sent to the, uh, in this case, it's a Wi-Fi access point, for example, that detects the command coming from, uh, the trigger coming from the sensor. This is being delivered, uh, again, either locally or remotely, but in this specific case, it triggers a change based on certain uh, definition uh, defined in the BMS uh, in order to uh, reduce the heat or increase the heat uh, using the HVAC system, of course. Here we, we get locally uh, using different sensors that can be wireless sensor or wired ones. Uh, we get the control and improvement of uh, different controls in the network. Similar scenario can be used also for lighting and of course motion control that can trigger lights and so on. So we can define different scenarios and according to the different feedback that we get from the sensors, uh, the activities are being uh, executed. Earlier, you mentioned that switch being a PoE switch. Can you talk a bit about PoE and its benefits? So power over Ethernet, why is it an advantage in a wired network? As I mentioned before, there are a few uh, possibilities to implement a network, whether it's a wired one or a wireless one. One of the key advantage of using a wired network when it's an Ethernet one, so IP-based one, uh, is the ability to use this technology called power over Ethernet. And uh, we see more and more, while seeing the development of IoT, that the uh, IP network became um, a universal network. And the minute we use PoE as part of it, PoE becomes what we call a universal power. So uh, we remove the need to basically uh, wire AC uh, cables and uh, outlets throughout the house or the building. We are talking about DC levels of power, which are way more safe because they are below 60 volt DC. And it's way more easy because the same cable that we use to deliver the data is used also to deliver power. So it's only one cable that goes into the device and uh, it is very easy to install very flexible, no need for electrician for that. And uh, the entire network becomes uh, way more uh, simple to maintain and easy to install as well. Uh, the ability to uh, have a wired network with the PoE on top of it makes it very easy to add elements, right? So if you want to add another device, add another luminar, and add, add another access point, add another IP phone, add another camera, the installation is way easier. Okay, it can be done by an IT manager, it can be done by each one of us that knows how to take a category five or six cable and just connect it. So scalability and flexibility of the networks becomes a big advantage. And uh, you get the ability to uh, control not only data, also power remotely, adding another uh, feature to your control elements can turn on or off a device. You can collect indications on power consumption. You can improve uh, the efficiency of a network. You can uh, detect certain elements uh, in it and measure the power consumption and so on. So there are quite a lot of different aspects that uh, are added when you are basically managing the power as part of the network. Now at CES, you had basically this miniature house mock-up to highlight these things that we're talking about. Tell me about that. Yes, at CES, uh, what we build is basically a, a small house in which we uh, used the PoE uh, PDS-408 uh, switch uh, that you see here on the right side as the backbone of the network. And to this switch, we basically connected uh, almost every element that we could think of. So we had the uh, IP phones connected to it. We had cameras connected to it. We had uh, different sensors connected to it. We had the uh, uh, screens connected to it. And we have at the right side, you can see also uh, basically uh, a management system that controls 
the entire building. We could uh, turn on and off the lights. You could get uh, different colors to the lights in the, in the building. You can uh, basically uh, turn down the shades. We connected them as well to the network. Everything could be done from the network management system that you see here or from your uh, iPhone. So we could uh, basically show the, 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 the people how uh, you can get full control on a small building with different uh, applications that they didn't, didn't even think about, all based on the Ethernet uh, network that we built uh, locally. Uh, you can see here there is a link uh, to an interview that, uh, that we gave at the, at the booth. Uh, if you are interested, you can uh, listen to a description of the benefits of this specific switch, what makes it interesting and uh, how we use it in, uh, specifically for lighting because it, it can be installed in, the, in ceilings. It makes it a little bit unique, uh, not only in communication room, also in, uh, in ceilings. Okay, so how do you bring all of that together? This is the question, how do we bring it all together? So uh, this is a modular approach. And in particular, we are talking about connecting IoT applications to the cloud, okay? We are talking about any cloud because it's agnostic, whether it's Amazon or Google. We are talking about the smart element, which is basically how to design your solution using any core. Uh, this can be an 8-bit MCU, it can be a 16-bit or 32-bit. So this is another element, the smart part of it, it can be AVR-based, PIC-based. And we are talking about the connectivity as well. So it can be wireless, Wi-Fi connectivity, can, can be wired connectivity using TCP IP protocol, uh, or maybe other uh, protocols. When we are looking into the design of an IoT system and we are choosing the wired option, there is another element, as I mentioned before, the POE element, and that's what you see in here. So we offer also that element in addition. The POE aspect of it, the, the specific chipset that uh, convert any IoT uh, application to become POE enabled. And on the infrastructure side, we offer the switch as a complete solution or also different uh, chipsets that implement the PSC capabilities, the power source equipment capabilities into residential gateways or any other device that may need POE capabilities. So this is the, let's say, infrastructure part, but the connectivity to the cloud, and this is the right side here, requires a secure element, and it needs to be, of course, uh, encrypted. And what we offer here is a set of uh, solutions that uh, does all the key storage, crypto, and authentication for you. So this is the uh, ECC 608A or B solutions that we offer. So we give you all the pieces, and uh, we allow you basically to dig into all the bits and bytes and get a very quick solution that you can build using different modules uh, and you can choose basically the ones you like to combine and get uh, your optimal uh, implementation. What about these IoT dev boards? If you uh, look at it from a reference design or a quick development uh, platform, we have those uh, IoT uh, boards which uh, offer you basically to the designer all the elements that I mentioned earlier. For the connectivity part, uh, there are different elements. In this specific example here, you see a Wi-Fi board. This board basically allows the designer uh, to very easily build a prototype uh, of your application uh, in order to show proof of concept. We provide basically also an application uh, ready to play so it's like a sandbox that the engineer gets and he can play and choose the right models that he likes and uh, very easily connect to the cloud and using the website, which is dedicated for that. And if this specific board here, you have two sensors, you can actually get control over uh, uh, light and temperature and uh, you can leverage uh, these specific uh, sensors here in order to control uh, your specific application. And if there are different other needs, then we are partnering with, with the microelectronics. They offer uh, tons of uh, different sensors, uh, micro sensors, uh, micro clicks that can be used in order to add other uh, models and other elements to the board. So this is uh, again, 
not a one size fits all approach. So you have here uh, the different options. When it comes to the sensors, the simple ones, the 8-bit ones are the ideal one for sensors, right? But as you scale up to the 16-bit or 32-bit, you get to more program, you need actually more program in space and more RAM. And it allows you to design more complex applications, uh, everything that involves, for example, image processing. So you have basically uh, the different options to choose uh, according to the design of the application. And then you have the different options that have to do with the, the connectivity to the cloud, whether it's the Google or uh, Amazon one. The soon uh, to have the Azure one. And then you also have some options for BLE connectivity, right? The same board that I presented earlier, the IoT board, as I said, comes in different flavors. And this specific version here has the BLE, so a low power Bluetooth connectivity, right? Uh, it's fully certified, fully tested Bluetooth. Uh, it's all done for you, so it allows very quick turn design. It's optimized for battery uh, power designs because we're talking here about low power Bluetooth connectivity. So uh, you can uh, use it in uh, battery uh, power design. And as I presented uh, earlier, right out of the box, you take it out and uh, connect it to the application and enjoy the benefits of uh, playing with it and checking it and uh, using it in your specific design. So this is a quick example of the application, which is designed by one of our partners, but uh, it's a very quick download from either Google or uh, Apple Store uh, to your phones. And then you can start controlling the board from your phone via the app, very easy to use, allows you to control uh, the LED, uh, everything. So within minutes, you can control the boards and uh, start playing with it. To sum it all up, what do you bring to IoT designers with this modular, any cloud, any core approach that you have? Okay, so um, what Microchip has to offer for uh, designers of applications within the IoT world, whether it's at home or in buildings, then we have basically all the technology uh, building blocks that the designer needs. And what it gives us, uh, the designers, is basically a very simplified way of designing uh, an application. From the network perspective, uh, the designer could choose a wired or a wireless option. From uh, the cloud connectivity, the designer can basically has everything ready for him to use based on all the agreements we have with the different service providers. From uh, other aspects of the design, when it has to do with the MCU, uh, all options are open from 8-bit to 16 to uh, 32 bits. Uh, when it has to do with the, the infrastructure itself, then I mentioned here uh, PoE, but we also have uh, different files designed by the company that can be used as well. So in addition to power for Ethernet options. So that together with the IoT boards that I presented that gives you tools over whether it's a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and simplify the design process makes it quick, weaker and way more simple. We are uh, very uh, proud of uh, being able to support basically anything as part of the Internet of Things, whether it's uh, the design of luminary drivers, uh, including the interfaces, sensors, and we have other sessions that also mention the human interface and machine learning aspects can be added to the smart control of a network. This is another element that can be added to the network design. Okay, thank you, Galit, for taking the time to share your superpowers with us. If you'd like to learn more about Microchip's connectivity and PoE solutions, click the links in the description or visit mauser.com. Also, check out the other episodes in the three-part series on smart homes and buildings, and be sure to check back soon for the next episode of Tech Chats. Mm -hmm.